I am going through assignment, Dreamweaver assignment three with you today. So assignment three in Dreamweaver is um, creating child pages from templates. So we're gonna go through some information on that. Right now I have my Dreamweaver open. Um, what it asks you to do for the first step is to create a site name assignments. Um, so this one is, I'm calling this assignment three. I'm going to call my folder assignments with an S. So I've already, and then my initials, um, what I've already done in here. So in this folder, I copied over everything from assignment two into um, a folder called assignment three. Um, and then I've copied assignment three folder over. So I have the assignment RTF that I will be using and I'm just gonna drop that into the folder as well. So this is what yours may look like um, with this RTF in it. It's not going in there, there we go. So you may already have this in here. I am just using my assignment two here. And I've also copied over the assignment three RTF. So I have that in here as well. Then it says to open and save assignment two as assignment three, um, et cetera, et cetera. So first thing I need to do here is I need to go and I'm going to just show you what that says in here. So this is what I'm reading from is assignment three Dreamweaver creating child pages from a template. Uh, step one, we've done that. Step two, copy the RTF and images files to your assignment that you use in assignment two. Open and save assignment two as assignment three and update the links. So this is actually like not just the image files, this is all of the files. And we're gonna save assignment three as a template. So um, I'm gonna go into my Dreamweaver here and I'm gonna say new site. This is going to be assignment three. And I'm going to go in my local site folder and I'm going to click on the assignments folder here. So um, I'm in Dreamweaver and I'm going into three and then assignments LS. I should have actually label this folder with my initials as well. So I'll go back and do that before I hand it in. So I'm going to choose that and save. And it's going to open up in your files tab on the top right. So you can see that I have examples of my assignment nine and 10, which these could probably be deleted. You can't do it from here, but you can do it in your other folder. Um, the next thing I'm going to open up before I open up this index, I'm going to actually label this three. So I'm going to say update the links. Yes, update the links. So it does that all for you. You don't have to go in and typically do too much, but um, let's go check it out. So I'll double click on my index LS assignment A3 now, just to make sure that it's linking properly. I'll go check out everything in my head. So my metadata, my links, all everything in there and make sure that that is functioning properly. So here is my site from assignment two. So I'm looking in my coding here. So as you can see, um, HTML, oops, that's all of my HTML. Here's my heading. So I'm gonna look at everything between the opening tag and the closing tag of my head. So I have my meta char set, that's good. I have, um, this which was in one of the templates I open. I have a meta tag viewport, so this is making it responsive. It says light theme, so I might actually change that to, um, this is gonna be called um, template. And then, or maybe I'm not gonna call that part template. I'm gonna call that the little bakery. I'm gonna put my title in there. Then it says CSS single page template. So that should be functioning fine as long as it is in the correct folder with my HTML and it is. Um, and then it talks about uh, my script. So this is linking to my JavaScript. This is linking to my JavaScript. 
I think everything else should be okay. So I'm just gonna say save all. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to make this index page a template. So when you have a template, what's great about a template is I can create all my other pages using the template and say I change something on that template and there was 100 pages I needed to change. If you change the template, every page will change as well. That was created using that template. Um, under file, all you have to do is go save as a template or save as template, and you're going to just change your uh, save name as template-1. So then I will save because it's going into assignment three. So that's the one that I'm working in right now. So save that and update links, yes. So now you can see in your under files tab, there is a templates folder and there's your template. Um, so the next thing that you're going to do is using this template. So we're gonna go into this template here so I can close this. So now you can see in the top of my tab, it says template dash one dot WT or DWT, which is Dreamweaver template. This is the one that we want to be working on. Oh, and it's already giving me like the prompt. So to create a new editable regions, use the insert template sub menu. So I'm just gonna say, okay. So it must be like a new menu that they have. So to create an editable region, we're gonna use the, um, we're gonna use some information in here. So I'm just gonna kind of scroll this up and, and check out my coding. So as you can see in under 20, it says template begin edible name head. Um, so what I need to do now is figure out which regions I want to be able to edit. So my home about contact, that's pretty much going to stay the same. Um, this part with my logo, again, will probably stay the same. Although I feel like I need to have something in here that says what page we're actually on every time we move. So I might leave the nav as editable. So I can select my nav here. Uh, we're going to choose an editable region to, and I think what we're going to do, this is main container. So we're going to go from the main container and we're, so we're going to select the whole body area. Um, so make sure that your footer is the way that you want it. Then we're going to leave that part. I think that is going to be okay. We did, I did not center this um, from the last one. Your homepage should be centered by now. Oh, because I already made it a template. Maybe that's why. So anyways, I'm just going to select from the body down to the closing body tag, which is, oh, it's way down there. So this is where the main container ends. So it actually is including the footer. So I am going to go back up. I'm just going to go from this div, the div tag at the top. So the very first div tag that we have. So I'm going to close my header. Here's my body. Um, so right from this opening div tag down to the footer, and I'm just gonna go up till I see footer. So right here, more info section. So on line 80 of my document, I'm gonna select that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to insert at the top menu. And then I'm gonna drag it down until I see template. And then I'm going to click on editable region. So now you can see that it says editable region and I'll say editable region three. Sure. We'll just call it that and let's say, okay. So now you can see that it gave us a comment that says template begin editable name. And then it gave us our name and then we can scroll all the way down. And then it says um, template and editable main container ends. Oh, you know why? Because it just picked the main container for us. I think is what, yeah, because we put it underneath the main container, so it just picked everything. And that's okay. We'll leave that like that. So you've made an editable region. Congratulations. Um, you're only going to have one editable region for this assignment. I'm going to go back to the assignment here. Um, now you can save and close the file. So I'm going to go save, save all, and close the file. So closing the file, meaning just click on the X in the top left corner. Now, when I go back to my files here, 
I'm going to actually create a new child page using my template that I just um, created. So uh, we're going to double click on and open the template now and save as save as an about page. We are going to use this template. So we're gonna go create new using our template. So we're gonna go into file new or just click on create and we're gonna go uh, site templates. So if you click on site templates under this, there should be some in this list here and ours is called template dash one. So it's not actually showing up. Oh yes, it is right here. Assignment three template dash one and we are going to say create. So now that we've done that, we've opened it, you can see it says Untitled 2. And you can see that there's a lot of information that's grayed out. So that's how we are um, going to start this one. So then we will save as um, one of these other pages that we have connecting to it. So this is going to be my About page. And so it's going to be About-LS, oops, LS HTML. I'm going to make sure that's saved in my assignment three assignments folder, and I'm gonna say save. So now at the top it says about LS HTML. So the great thing about this is now when I go to format um, anything in here, um, I can make this look a little bit different. I can change the color say of the background just so that people understand that this is now a different page that they're on. So you want to give them some of those visual clues as to what is what page is happening here. So because this is an about page, I'm going to change where it says light up here and I'm going to put about about us. So they know that this is what page they're on. I'm also going into my background right here. If I can click on it, I want that blue um, background that's just behind my logo. So maybe this section. Yeah, it's under section.hero. So I'm going to go into my CSS designer and I'm first going to type section. It's not showing up. So that to me tells me that it's a class that's making it um, that color. So I'm going to type in hero. If I look in my CSS code, it says class hero and ID hero. So I'm going to click on this dot hero here. And I can see that there is the color exactly right here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this one to more of a purple. Um, so same tone. I'm not really moving the dot around. I'm just moving the sliders around. So I'm going to make this one purple. So this is about page. So kind of matching in the tone, but changing the color. So now that I've done that, um, it says I can go back to uh, my assignment outline. And it says add the type Adobe Dreamweaver CC course. So I'm going to put that, um, I'm going to create a new paragraph actually. So underneath my uh, fresh section, I'm going to create a heading called, so I'm going to call this H1, and it's going to be. Um, Adobe Dreamweaver CC course. I'm going to call, I'm going to give this a class center. So it's centered like the logo is. So if I select on my selectors on the right hand side, I'm going to type in H1. And there isn't actually anything associated with H1. So what the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look for uh, find in the current document any H1s. So class stats. So these are going to be these are heading ones here. Uh, I don't mind that, but I'm going to call this one. I'm going to give this one a different class. So I'm going to go back to my dream over here. I'm going to hit the plus sign in the window there, and I'm going to call this main header. And then I'm going to hit return and hit return again. Now you can see it's added that to my code class main header. I'm going to go over to the right hand side under CSS designer. I'm going to type main header. Click on that. Under my uh, properties, I'm going to uncheck the show set. 
And I want to center this, so I am going to my text here and I'm going to say center. So as you can see, my Dreamweaver um, is now centered and I'm going to change the type to white. I really don't want this to be too distinct, so I'm going to just see what it says in here. So if it's, it says create a new custom CC rule. Oh, and I should have named it content H1. Um, so if that were the case, I could go back and actually name it that. So I would say dot content H1. So there's my content H1. It says that it wants a font size of 200%. So I'm going to use that in my, I'm going to go into my selectors and say content. Oh, there it is. Content H1 here. Font size. So I'm going to go to type. And it says font size here. So instead of medium, I'm going to type in a percentage, 200%, and I'm going to hit tab. And there's my, so save all. So I have that done. It also says to set the bottom margin to six pixels. So to do that, you're just going to, in the same area here, you're going to click on your layout and go to margin. And at the bottom, you're just going to add six and it should say six pixels. So there is your um, part seven done. So I'm gonna save all. I'm gonna just check out my site. So remember, I'm going to go to the bottom here where it says preview and click on Google Chrome. It should open up a window here right away and then we can see how it looks. And it says it's not found, so that's not good. That means something is not working. So we're going to go um, back to our files here, over way over here, and I'm going to just click on this about page over here because I think something is not um, linking properly. Oh, and it is here. So that's interesting. So I have my Dreamweaver CC. I have the name of my name, my logo. Everything looks good. Okay, great. Um, so I'm going to go back to my assignment and it says create new, I did all of this. So we're done most of that. So now we're on step eight. In the files panel, open assignment three RTF. And import the first paragraph ending with the word build. So in your Dreamweaver here, I'm gonna just figure out where I'm gonna put that. So I'm gonna maybe put this table just under, um, because we're not in the about page anymore either, this says about, I'm going to stick it underneath. I'm probably going to put it in this area right in here. So where all this text is, I'm probably going to stick in maybe in these two columns. A, that's where I'm going to import my information. So in this section here on line 47, it says class hidden about. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to go up to the right hand side of my documents and I'm going to go insert and I'm going to say table. So insert, oh, and I'll show you just what that uh, file looks like actually. So the file that we're uh, importing is a little bit of a table here and some information there. So it says what we're doing here. So I'll see if it works when I do this. Import a table. So this is how we're going to create our table. Oh, here we go. Import ta tabular data. Sorry, file, import tabular data. So then you have to look for this data file. The data file is called RTF assignment three. So I have to go to that area um, right here. And then I can say fit to data cells padding space we can always fix this after and then i'm going to say okay so rtf stands for rich text format if you didn't know um and there we go so now it just inserted my table borders and the information from my tables um that i'm importing from that rtf file so once this is done we have to format the paragraph if it's not already and create a new custom CC rule called content P, meaning content paragraph. Then the font size will be 18 and the um, color will be set to hashtag 0000, uh, set the line height to 
22p pixels. Importing the RTF file into Dreamweaver for me is not working. I'm going to go back to my Dreamweaver file here. I'm going to have to open up that about page again. And I'm going to manually um, insert the information. So I have to open up my RTF file. So I've already done that here um, in text edit for me. So I'm going to copy this area here and I'm going to be importing that first. So again, I'm going to go to split view. I'm going to go down to the section I want to put it in, which is called section about right there. I'm going to hit return. I'm going to put the paragraph in here. So I'm just going to go and copy this paragraph and paste it. Oh, and that's not working. I didn't copy this, so I'm going to copy this information. And then I'm going to paste it right there. So now up into the word build, it says. So first paragraph ending in the word build. So now I will do that. This is just giving me an error because I added that too early. So you can see this course introduces students to rapid prototype building, blah, blah, blah. And then this is a paragraph here. Um, so maybe after these two paragraphs, before the section ends. So I'm going to, this is the end of the section. So after that, that's where I'm going to put in um, my table, but I need to put in some bullet points here too. So um, back to my RTF file, it says professional grade site architecture content. I have to go into the word build here. We're going to add a break. So we're going to put BR in our coding. We're going to add um, a break tag. And then I'm going to add on the next line, I'm going to add professional grade site architecture um, structure and content. So now I have those. Uh, it says to format the paragraph if it's not already. So I'm going to leave the formatting as it is because I do like that. It says create a new custom class rule named content P. So I'm going to go into um, this here. It says to create a new CSS rule. So I'm going to add that here, just pushing the plus sign. Content P, I'm going to hit enter. So that stands for content paragraph typically. Uh, CSS designer, I'm going to go into dot content P down at the bottom here and click on it. And then I can uncheck show set. So next thing I want to do is for that paragraph structure, I think I'm going to change the color. So I'm going to go to my text and I'm going to change the text color, which may not work. It says it's black. Um, oh no, there we go. So I'm just changing the text color to black. Maybe not that black. I'm going to change it to a dark gray just so that it's more prominent the rest of the text. And again, you can kind of play with those colors, or just the strength of it. There we go. The other thing I could have done instead of doing this is if I go back a few steps here is I could actually just bold that. So I could say font to make this bold. I'm actually just going to add the uh, tag in the coding that says strong. And then I have to have an end tag after the word build so that it's a bit bolder. And in content P, if I go back to my selectors here, I can type in content P. It also wants me to make this 18 point. So I might actually take off the, out that strong depending on how, eight, how big 18 pixels actually. So I'm going to go to font size and I'm going to say 18 pixels like oh, like so and hit tab and then it says oh it says set the color at zero 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 so it is set at zero 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 it's set it black uh, so there we go and then it says set the line height to 22 pixels so under same area in your css designer it says line height you can say um, in here 22 pixels tab. Oh, and it didn't select pixels, so I'm going to just select pixels. So there we go. So there is my um, paragraph. 
And now that strong might be a little too strong, so I'm going to take that out there. And that looks a lot better. So we have that, and I'm going to save all because I've, I haven't completed I've completed that one step. So I want to just make sure I keep doing this uh, along the way. So if anything crashes or doesn't open, I can still continue working from where I left off. Sorry, step nine, it says er, insert a new paragraph after the word bur, um, build. So where I have that break, I'm actually going to put in a new paragraph style. And just like that, I'm going to end this as a paragraph style. So I have to put a closing tag after um, I'm going to take out the break and just put paragraph style end. Then I'm going to have another paragraph style here. You know what? I'm going to actually put this one inside. So I'm going to do a nested paragraph. So I did a nested paragraph in there. So I have my class, my first paragraph that ends in build, and then I have a second paragraph that starts with professional grade site architecture. Um, and then I will close. Close that architectural or the three points, and then I will close the main paragraph and I will say save. So then the next thing that you want to do, and actually I should say save all because I might have done some stuff to the CSS there. Um, import the three lines. So we've done that. We insert the break tags and P paragraph tags, making make the type white. Well, because our background is white, we can't really make our type red white on here. So just make it um, gray, maybe any other color is fine. I might make mine the same purple color. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to do an architectural grade and then a break. And then I'm going to do structure and another break. And then in my coding, I'm also going to add a break tag to the end of content. Okay, so now that that is done, I'm going to save again. And what I want, oh, and look at my paragraph tag there. It's not in my section. So hmm, I might just have to add a break and leave it as I had it because it is already in a paragraph tag. So I might just leave it like that. So I'm not gonna do a nested paragraph. I'm just gonna leave it as it was. Now that I have this in here, um, I can add an unordered list. Maybe. Oh yeah, we have to do that next. So we'll do that after. Make your type white and then return to design view. The next thing I'm going to do is go on to step 10 and that says create a new unordered list, CSS rule name content, ULLI with the font size of 18 pixels. So I'm gonna create a new, my CSS. So I'm gonna go into here and do it in here. So under, before the footer, I'm going to put it before the footer. So I'm going to go content, U, L, L, I, and then I'm going to put a curly bracket. I'm going to write this one in, so I'm going to put font size, equal, uh, colon, 18 pixels, and then I'm going to put in um, font color. Um, and it says dot zero, 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 another semicolon. Set the line height to 22 pixels. So I'm gonna put line height and it's right there. 22 pixels. Oh, sorry. Yep, no, that is right semicolon, and then it says set the list style position to inside and the box margins to, um, so I'm going to do margins, right bottom left. So it's going to go, now if I remember correctly, it goes top, right, bottom left. So kind of like north, north, east, south, west. So, or like a, um, a clock. If you can think like counter, not counterclockwise, but we're going clockwise direction. So from the top. Um, so in here it says we're not putting in a top, so we're going to put zero. Then it will say um, right is 25, left is five, and or sorry, bottom is five and left is 20. 
and we will hit enter and closing curly tag bracket. So now that we, oh, I have too many. I had one already, so I'm just going to take that one out. I'm going to go save all. Oops. And then I'm going to go back to my HTML code. And I didn't do the list style position to inside, so I wanted to show you how to do that. So um, it's saying I need to, I want to apply that to just right here. So I'm going to, I'm going to apply it and emphasize to this area. Just those three. It doesn't necessarily have to be an M, but I want to apply something to this section because I want to treat it a little bit differently. So then I'm going to go into um, the M now that I have the M in there and I'm going to add a plus sign and call this content content um, U L L I. So it's going to be an unordered list with links is basically what it's trying to do. So I'm going to do that here. So it's going to be, um, Oh wait, content. We're going to put this under uh, UL. Oops. It's going to be an unordered list. We're going to put this around the bracket here. So we have an opening unordered list, a closing unordered list, our, our EM class content. Um, and instead of EM, you know, we'll put links. Oh, li. So I'm going to do that to all of them here. So I'm going to do that. And a closing li. Oops. I here. So this is the great thing about knowing a little bit about coding, a little bit about um, using Dreamweaver. So I'm going to just keep doing this to all of these three bullet points that I want to have in here. And then I just have to make sure that I have those closing as well. And then we'll just change this one to LI there. So now I have those all uh, configured. So I'm going to say save all. And now you can see like it's showing this list here. But it's not really sitting the way that I want it to. So I might also add a text column to my um, unordered list or yes. So then I can put uh, unordered list. Oops. Class equals text column because I do want it still to be in a column. I'm going to throw that down so I can see that really easily. And we'll go save all again. And as you can see, it's part of that unordered list. So it has that same um, feel as those other ones do. The dots. And it's interesting because it should still be in this area, but it's not for some reason. So I'm not totally sure why, but we will deal with that later. So the next thing I'm going to do, pardon me, is going to be putting in my table. So I want to save this. Save as. Oh no, I have to say save all. We're going to go take a look at that and see how that's looking um, from here. So if I click on my preview, it's going to bring that up and that's where we're at here. So I, you can see I have a couple more. Uh, one of my paragraphs has bumped down. I'm probably going to take this one out and I want to put my table in this area. So I think that's what I will be doing. Um, again, you'd probably have like a sketch of what you were going to be creating and, and wouldn't be just putting it together like this exactly. So I'm going to take out this paragraph here. And as you can see, now we don't have that there. Yep. And then the next thing I want to do is add my table. 
because I don't have, remember from our RTF, I still need to insert this area here. So um, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven rows and basically two columns. So we want to create a. Oh, I got to take this space out here. I'm going to go down to um, just around this par last paragraph here and I'm going to go up over to my tabs here and click on insert. When you click on insert, there will be one called table. So now that I know I needed 11 rows and I need to have two columns. My table width is going to be 200 pixels to start because I can always adjust that after. And my border thickness is going to be one pixel. I'm not going to worry about cell padding and spacing at the moment um, and or anything else. So I can say OK. So now that I have my information in here, I can import some of this here. So notice that the first column is empty. So we don't want to have that in there. So I'm just going to copy and paste because remember it wasn't working for me before and I don't want to um, wait for Dreamweaver to figure out what I'm doing. So in every second where it says TD, this is table data. So TR is table row, TD is table data. So in the second one, I'm going to just continue adding my all of my information here. So maybe we could speed this part up. And it looks like I have counted wrong. So I'm actually going to grab this and add one more. So I'm just going to hit return. I copied table row and I'm just going to paste another table row here. So then I'm going to copy this area, copy and just replace that text. Paste. Table row. Oh, I've, I have to put in the opening. So I have an opening table row, a closing table row for that section. So, um, and then the other thing I'm going to grab is in this Dreamweaver course, you will learn how to. So I'm going to copy that and make that my table header. So to do one of those up at the very top where it says table body, I'm going to put in um, table header, so TH, and then I'm going to paste and then have my closing tag um, sitting there. And then we'll say save all. So you can see I have my table header. Oh yeah, but it needs to span both. Um, we want to span it across both columns. So I'm going to hit that and then I'm going to say save all. Um, table. Header. I need to make this a bit bigger. So I'm going to go into um, I'm just going to call this header or table header. And so I'm creating a new rule. I'm going to hit that and then I go into my CSS designer and I'm going to go table header. Click on that and then I can span this the width of the I can say um, minimum width is 100%. Oh, it's so interesting, it's not spanning. So, Oops, I put in 1100. Well, maybe I won't put it in my table. Maybe I will put my t my header outside of my table because I don't really like the way that it's looking. So I'm going to grab my copy here and command X for cut. And I'm actually going to put that where it says table 
border just where it says table width table and then I'm going to put in um, just a new paragraph that says that information there. So it's like that. Oh, and I have one extra table row so I can take that out. So I actually did have the right amount. So there we go. I'm going to save that. Okay. So now that I have that, it says my width is 200 and my um, order is one. Um, to this table, I'm also going to ask, add my class um, text column so that it sits within that same column area that we've created for those other, just so that it looks nice, oops, and I hit. I might have to take out the width then so that it actually works and go save all. And then it will, it's kind of taking on that same, um, and we're not going to take it. We're going to take out this border actually. Oh, and do did I take out my table completely? No. I guess we could leave them at 200. Um, yeah, that looks good. So anyway, so I'm going to go back to here. I'm going to update, so refresh my screen and take a look at my table here. I'm not a super fan, but it's working all right. So as you can see, it's like um, taking on all of the uh, structure that the other one was. Same. And I can always go back after I've handed this in and um, I'm just adding a colon there and make it look a lot better for assignment four. So now that you know how to do that, you can import uh, Dreamweaver CC course. We, so we just copy and pasted. We didn't import necessarily because our RTF file is not working. Um, it says format using header two. So instead of using paragraph here, they want me to use header two. And then I'll have a closing tag of header two. And I will save all. And I'm actually going to add my class to this as well. So it's going to be class equals text column. There we go. And I'm going to say save all. So now I have uh, my header, which actually looks like a header, and then I have my table underneath. Now, if I wanted to play with these, I can always play with my table data information. So if I said TD, um, I could create like table um, see in my CSS. So if I have there's my table. It's under, it's under my nav, parallax, container head, container nav. I'm going to just try and find, so here's my content UL. It doesn't look like we used it. I'm going to add underneath here um, my, does it say here? So table rows. Import the entire table. Check to see if the rows are imported in an unordered list. If they are, remove the property. So we don't have to worry about that because we just copy and pasted ours. But I do want to set the table rows. So I'm going to go TR and I'm going to um, set the row sizes. So I'm not putting anything in. I'm just putting TR for right now. And then if I go to my selectors and type in TR, you'll see that it shows up here. What I love about this is that you can kind of see like, so if I play with any of the margins or padding, it kind of shows you what those look like. Uh, so that's not doing anything. I'll just say undo. Positioning, uh, so I could make these all 
If I go to text, I can actually make these left aligned instead of, and they just look a little bit nicer. I can make the text a little bit smaller, say, so I can make my text size. Um, I can just drag this up to 13 pixels. I could leave it like that. With these, um, the table data, I might want to make some for the table data as well um, so that they fit my information. So these don't have much information in them, so they just have a space and that's why they're so little. So I could make them look a tiny bit different if I wanted to. Um, if you imported the data, it would make them look more like the data sheet in the RTF, obviously. So um, as you can see, my container's not really fitting my information. So if I click on this, this says table text column, and I can go to my, sometimes you can click on this. Nope. I'm going to go to my CSS designer and go table. Um, and I'm going to just, there is no table. So I'm going to actually create a table here. So I'll go table. And then I'm going to, um, so this is going to take anything with table associated with it. And it's going to make them the same size. So I want the maximum width, max width to be, to inherit maybe. And I want them, I don't know what I want the minimum width to be. I'm gonna just scale this down and see what happens when I do that. Oh yeah, and that's all right. Oh, it actually took the column in here. I did put in the, oops. I'm going to save all and preview. So as you can see, I made my viewport really small. And I just wanted to see how this um, scales. So it's not too bad. I still do want to take out this paragraph, so I will go and do that over in my source code. So when I scroll down, and right here on 105 for me, I'm going to just delete until that section comes up, the closing section. So my closing section tag, I have my table end tag, and then I'm going to save all again. So as you can see, if I just scroll down a bit here, this is my table, um, my table rows, and my information. Now, I still think that this would be better if I had an empty column here, or if I took that column out altogether and have these bullet points underneath this information. So to do that, you're going to go up to your section and go to uh, your paragraph. So this is my paragraph here. I'm going to copy all of my unlinked information. And I'm going to take out the break. And after the word build. And then, oh, and then I'm going to make sure it's right there. So if I say save all now, it should bump it down, but it's not. Oh, because and I have content P. So I'm going to do um, content. Oops. I'm adding content P to my paragraph, um, an ordered list. Because I want that type to match, because that's in the same kind of area. And I'm going to go into these and just check my paragraph, because I have a feeling it's saying the maximum height is going to be. Um, there is no paragraph here, so I'm going to check text column, text column. So I think what's happening is the text column is going to have a height restriction. So the width is 29%, padding is 20%, the line height's 25%. No, 
Um, and then content P, I'm also going to check content P. There's no height restriction there. So it's just quite puzzling as to why um, it's not working. So I'm going to go text column and I'm going to give my text column um, a maximum height or ma a minimum height, sorry. And I'm going to go, oh, look at that. I can, that bumps it to the next area. So I don't want to do that. I'm going to take that one out. Is it the minimum? No, it's not. Take that out. So this is where I just sometimes play with these box sizing. Inherit or content box. No. OK, well, I will play with the height then. Although it's quite funny that it's not it's doing this box, but it's not doing the box that I want. So I'm going to go back so that I'm not playing with this anymore. And I'm actually going to click on the section above that that says class about. So I'm going to go in there and check that because in there they might have restrictions there about height. So this says display inline and that's great because it's meaning all of the columns are in line. Um, maximum minimum height. So if I click on minimum height. I think it's not doing too, it's using this here. So you still think that if I take out this content, I can take out this text column here. Now it's just content P. Moving on right along, it says create a new dot content table. So for here, for in your table, we're going to go into your CSS code and we're going to add dot content table. So I'm right here on we're we're reading through step 15. So I'm adding dot content table to my CSS. Font size needs to be 110. So then I can say um, font dash size. And then I can put 110%. And then it also says to add a width of 800 pixels. Width 800 pixels and um, left margin at 15%. So I'm just going to put margin dash left. 15%. Whoops. So now that I have that in there, it says add a new border collapse property to the content table CSS rule. So I'm going to show you that too. I just want to make sure this is good. So I'm going to say save all. I'm going to go over to my CSS designer and I'm going to find that content table. So content table. And then I'm going to, so it says 800 there, left margin there. So if I show, it shows what I've done, font size. Now it's also saying to add a border to the bottom and make it a solid color. So to do that, I'm going to uncheck and up in your prop, just under your properties, you'll see the middle icon there is your borders. So I want to have um, a border, adding a border to the bottom. So I'm going to click on this one here. Um, so this one's all the way around, top, right, bottom. Then it says to add two pixels of padding, not your width. It says to add it to the padding. So border radius, spacing. I'm not doing it in here. I'm going to go up to my padding and add a 2%. To so, oh no, two pixels. It does say to add two pixels. So I just added two pixels there. And then border bottom, solid and color. So I'm going to go back to border and go border.
border um, color style solid and that's it so then there's my content table notice how it's not affecting my table yet now that is because we haven't actually added it to our rule so for the table then you would say uh, now you're going to say content p or no content table right there and now it's going to add that to this information and we'll probably also add it to this area so content table so that this is all in the same area so you can see that there's a border and line underneath and it has all my information neatly displayed so now it's looking a lot better i will save this again save all and then the next thing i'm going to do is uh, head into number 16. oh we also it's a new border collapse property so i also have to do the border collapse so i'm going to go into here it says border collapse so this is um, either you can click on collapse in or collapse out. So if I collapse this way, I, you can look in your CSS coding here and it says, oh, it doesn't even, it didn't even add it there. It's not applying to my content. Oh, you know what? It's applying to my section because I'm not in the right, I'm in a boat right now, so I wasn't paying attention. So you can see in CSS Designer, I have a boat highlighted. So I'm gonna go back, go back, and like this is not where I want it applying to. So I'm gonna take these all off of there, and I'm gonna to go to my content table, which is right here. Make sure that's selected in my selectors. So content table right there, and then I'm gonna to go to my border and apply my border collapse there. That's better. So now it says border collapse collapse or border collapse separate. So it all depends on what you want it to look like. So this is like just changing the style of your border, basically. And I'm going to leave it as a border collapse. So I can say save all. And I'm going to go view it again in Chrome. So we will do a, a refresh here. And then I'm going to scroll down just to check it out. And you can see that part of my border is missing at the bottom. That's because my about section is not big enough. So I have to go to my about here. So my maximum height in pixels is going to be as big as it needs to be for that chart to show up. So I have 548 right now. I have 613 and it doesn't look like it's going to get any bigger than that. So I might actually have to make my table smaller. I'm going to give it some padding. There we go. It's my padding I need to change. So I'm going to leave this at zero. My padding is going to be 25. I'm going to set that. So that's something we just added to that. So I'm just going to refresh and show you. I'm not going to refresh. I'm going to go here and Google Chrome. It means I haven't saved all of the files. So I'm just going here, opening up, and I'll show you the. So now it looks like this. The next and almost last thing we need to do is preview our page and save as a PDF. So I'm going to go um, shrink this down into a file so I can kind of view it a bit better like that. So the other thing you can do before you switch it to a PDF, sometimes this works, is in your quality here, you can shrink it down to 50% and it fits a bit better on there, right? And then once you have that in there, I can go to print PDF and see now it's 50% of the size, so I can see the width. And then I'll say save. And then I'm gonna go into my assignment three. Assignments here, and I'm just gonna save this as a .pdf, the little bakery 
um, I'm not going to call it the little breaker. I'm going to call it, um, what does it say? Assignment. Um, I was supposed to call my template dreamweaver.dwt, it looks like, which I missed. So I'm going to call this one assignment three. And PDF and save. Now, when you open this file up, so I'm just going to show you what it looks like. Um, now I have this assignment three PDF. When I open this up, this is what it looks like here. So I can kind of see exactly what you've done if you've done it correctly. So if your um, Dreamweaver isn't working or if some, something's missing in your document, I can see that your document was working on your end, and that just means that some of the links are not linking. So that helps us a lot. Save your work. So you're going to save all of this and you're going to actually use this going into assignment four. So that is it. Thank you for listening.